Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, glory to God. God bless you, baby. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm coming. Hallelujah. Stay with me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. God, we give you the glory on today. We give you the glory on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listening to Ja'Kayla Carr. Ja'Kayla Carr just trying to set everything up for you guys. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. It's so good to see you guys. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. Oh, yeah. It's been a minute. Um, I just want you to know that I love you and I miss you. And I hope that everybody had a wonderful weekend. I'm going to, um, um, let me, let me get a little light on the scene. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I just thank God for each and every one of you on today. Um, my topic is going to be very serious on today. If any, if any of you noticed on this weekend, I put up a prophecy, um, um, about criminals that are really harming the souls of man. If anyone noticed that um, particular prophecy, if not, I will, I would love for you to go back and read over the prophecy that the Lord had dropped into my spirit this weekend. He, he, he compelled me to write that because there is something that is on the rise. Something is on the rise. Okay. But there is crimes that are about to be brought before the judgment seat of God that have been done against the souls of humanity. And it's, it's really sad because a lot of people are unaware of some of the atrocities that have taken place against the soul of mankind. So I'm going to be dealing with that on today. I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. I'm kind of tired. Of, um, every time I come up here, you know there's going to be opposition because Jeremiah, Jeremiah said that they didn't really want to change. They really wanted to keep things their way. So we're going to be dealing with the crimes against the souls of humanity on today. And those that are lost and don't even realize that they are lost. And, and, and Facebook family, I want you to know that the race is against time. We are racing against time. We're trying to collect the harvest. Thank God for social media because um, for those that can hear me, for those that can see me, um, I'm not just a renegade, somebody that just want to be seen by everybody. No, that's not me. i am never been um, one to stand before people, but God calls those that are obedient to the call. They're obedient to his voice. It's not about reputation. It's not about being famous. It's not about becoming rich. It's not about any of these things. It's about, and, and yeah, he wants to get some glory, but the most important important part to this is that he wants souls to be brought into the truth about who they are and what this thing is all about. And a lot of people do not realize that they have been lost for a long time and, and they have many that are lost right there in the house, right there in the house. God bless you for um, um, coming aboard this morning. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get it out of the way. Um, because, um, you know, when you call by God to do something, there's going to be um, a, an onslaught of opposition, an onslaught, because people do not want to change. And you got to realize that you're messing with systems. You're messing with the system of man. You're messing with financial institutions. You're messing because if somebody's listening, if someone of importance is listening to what I have to say today, then it can bring a, um, I mean, a transformation and, and not just to one 
one person, but one person that can change a nation of people. And so we are dealing with some real horrific and um, horrendous things that are taking place, not only in the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, but in the world at large. And so there are some things that are transpiring in our world. There are some things that are transpiring in our churches that are about to hit the fan and it's going to blow a whole lot of minds. God said great names are about to fall. People that should have been in place to do the right thing are about to be pulled down off of their thrones. Well, it's never too late to get it right. Um, we're going to talk about the soul of man, but I wanted to start um, on something brief today before I got started. I wanted to say to those that may not understand what this thing is all about, that you have a soul and your soul is connected to the spirit or the mind of God. And, and, and unfortunately, when we are born into the world, we are disconnected from our spiritual substance. We are disconnected from our spiritual essence. And because we are disconnected from that portion of ourselves, we have been reduced to the outer gates, which is our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our feelings, and the things that um, helps us to delegate in our physical lifestyle. But it has nothing to do with our spiritual development. I saw um, you guys um, a, um, an open in our vision and I don't know if it was a vision or it was a reality um, I saw um, beast um, peering in through the dark they were ugly I mean they were real monster looking things but when I when when I saw them when I when I, when when I saw them peer in, their faces were round and they were beasts, and all you could see was the beatiness of their eyes. But then they were clothed again and they looked beautiful. They look like regular people, but they were beast inwardly. Um, because the spirit man has taken on the nature of the, of the degraded flesh, the nature of the reduced, um, flesh, the nature of the greed of flesh. The spirit man has become a ravenous beast. It has become a ravenous wolf because it has been restricted to the belly of man. It has been restricted to the greed of man. And now God is trying to, um, call upon those that will obey him to collect the harvest to collect the harvest and i'm gonna tell you something god will always calls call us to do something that we are unqualified to do so we can depend upon him to get the job done so i i i i, I wanted to say that those that are not aware that they are spirit they are soul and they are body okay you are being called in because there is something that is about to transpire in our world. And he don't want people to be, he don't want us to be, look, people are going to be lost simply because they are ignorant to the truth. And those, and the truth that should be taught in the temple is not being taught in the temple. Well, the purpose for Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach coming, was to lead man back to a spiritual substance that reside on the inside of him that connects him to his eternal existence. His eternal existence. We are spiritual beings um, living out of a soulish nature that has been reduced down to the flesh and therefore the spirit man has been held captive by the knowledge of the world by the nature of the flesh and it has no way out except it is led out by truth and made free by the light of God's mind it is the light of God that brings freedom to the soul of man um, the soul of man has what he has life but the mind of God or the mind of man which is the spirit of God in man he said be ye renewed according to Romans I do believe that's the 11th chapter be ye renewed or be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind be ye renewed by the spirit coming from your mind and so there is a spirit that is in inside of our minds and that spirit must be lit that spirit must be redeemed that spirit must be what restored to its rightful place so it can peer into the soul of man and so would be in the soul would be able to see from the inside out and not from the outside in where we have been trained by the world system and this is why this thing is so scary we have been trained by the world system to go into a school system i'm not saying that you shouldn't get education i'm just saying that the education without the spiritual um substance of god is an intellectual animal it is an 
intellectual beast. It is something that is still animal nature because you're reduced to your physical man, but it has no spiritual substance. And the Bible says that substance and faith are two of the same entities or it's two of the same um, um, articulated focuses. He said that faith was the substance of things hoped for. So it is the substance of man that causes faith to take form in their lives. But if they have no spiritual substance and all they are working with is the knowledge of the world that has been planted in the soul. Did you hear what I said? That the knowledge of the world has been planted in the soul. And because the soul has nothing but knowledge, it, it, it lives off of the nature of the senses. And knowledge creates the intellect. It creates the emotion. But it also creates the ego. Now the ego is not something that we are born with. We are not born with an ego. We are born with an id. An id. It is something that they could not identify. Okay? We are born with an id. It is something that we... Look, they cannot identify an id. And so it's an ID. It is an, it is, a, that's why they gave us identity. That word is id in entity. It's an, it's an entity that they could not identify because it did not come from this world, but it is spiritual. And if that spirit is not returned to its rightful place, then it will take on the nature of the soul, which is um, reduced to the nature of the flesh. And then the flesh will cause that thing to, to look like a beast. It's a beast. Do you hear what I say now? Let's go to the word real quick. I want to start with Ecclesiastic, you guys. I want to start in Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastic, the third chapter. Ecclesiastic, the third chapter. I miss you guys. Um, when I'm going through real bad, I don't like to come up here. I'm going to tell you something. When you have truth, you are a threat to the kingdom of darkness. When you have truth, you become a threat to the kingdom of darkness. The kingdom of darkness is a place where people do not have light. That's all it means, that you are living in a place where you don't understand. You are living in a place where you are ignorant to the devil's devices. You are living in a place where you have no insight into the truth. And so now you are in darkness. You are in darkness. And so when you have truth and that light begins to peer into the soul of man, they have been blinded by the God of this world, then you become a threat to those that are living according to the greed of their belly. They're living according to the lust of their flesh. Somebody has to make a sacrifice. Somebody has to give up their life in order for other people to live. I know Jesus did it. I know Yeshua Hamashiach did it, but he did it and he told us we too must do the same. We must become a doorway to someone else. We must become what? The light of the world. So let's go real quick to Ecclesiastes. God bless you guys. So when I get when I get the teaching, right after the teaching is over, there's a lot of traffic coming in and out of the out of out of out, 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 out of the room. Okay, there's a lot of traffic. There's a, you can hear the wall boom, bam, boom. Yeah, because these beasts are moving about, and they are they are horrible. They are doing things that are that are um, criminal to to the soul of man. They are raping. They are they are they are abusing. They are. They are uh, penetrating the souls of man based on their own um, desires, based on their own lust. These are beasts that have become criminal against the soul of man. But God said that judgment is coming. It is already on the rise because these are the, these are his souls. These are his creatures. These are his creation. And so people that are, are, are trying to prevent the creature from being reunited with this creator, they are standing in the way of the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. And judgment is on the rise. Do you hear what I say? Judgment is on the rise. Hallelujah. I'm going to Ecclesiastes um, uh, um, 3 and I'm going to start at 18. 18. Okay. Um, it say, let, let's start, let's start in the 17th verse where it say, I said in my heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked for there is a time. Therefore, there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Okay. And I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men, the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them that they might see that they themselves are beasts because without the development of God in man man has become beast man and and who would know better than Solomon because he was led away by all of those wives he was led away by all of those different gods and he realized that man had become beast 
without God. He knew that he did not have connection to his creator. And those that have become beasts, they are driven by lust. They are driven by greed. They are driven, they are driven by things that will fulfill the five senses, which is the, 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 um, the endowment of the ego, um, that really does not exist except it feels that it exists. It's a feeling that has no real substance in it. Feeling does not have substance. Substance come from God. Okay, now look, um, 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 Solomon said, this was something. Solomon said, I said in my heart, Ecclesiastic for you that are just coming up, 3 and 18. I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them, that they might see that they themselves are all beasts. Why is that? Let's go to the 19th verse real fast. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man have no preeminence above a beast. That a man has no preeminence above a beast. Why is that? Because he is not connected to his spiritual substance. He is connected to his lower nature. He is connected to the appetite of the flesh. He is connected to the soul without God. He is connected to what? The ways of the world. He has no inward connection to God. And so he has become like beast. He is instinctual like a beast. Until he is redeemed, until he is restored to his rightful place, he has taken on the nature of beast. And Solomon realized that man's breath was equal to the breath of beast and that his preeminence was not even above beast because he had no spiritual substance. How could Solomon say such a thing? Because he had no redemption, because Christ had not came yet. Christ had not come to redeem man back to his rightful place yet. And although Christ have come now, many are standing in the way. And they are beasts standing in the way, preventing the sons of men and the sons of God from moving inward towards the kingdom within. But God said that judgment is on the rise for the atrocities that have been done against the soul of mankind, not just in the church, but in the world, not just in the church, but in the world. But the church should have done what she was supposed to do. And that first in her first ordinance was to submit herself unto the Lord. Now, let's go to the next one. And it says, so, so man dieth like beast. He has no preeminence for all is empty. All is without substance. All is empty. All is without substance. It does not have the substance of God. They do not have the substance of God, except they be redeemed, except they be restored, except they be reconciled back to their rightful place in eternity. Because otherwise they have become beasts. The spirit has now been subjugated to the soul, the soul that was subjugated to the flesh because it was led out. Outward, to live out of another man's intelligence, to live out of another man's knowledge, to live out of another man's what? educational system, a grid system that has been put in place to keep man holding to a fixed position in his mind. So he will never know to turn and go inward. The Bible say that they have to turn themselves and go inward and in them rests the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the almighty. He dwells within all creation waiting to be redeemed, waiting to be restored back to his rightful place in this earth plane. Well, man is not doing this. And for those that want to expose truth, they are coming up under the onslaught of, 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 of beatings. They're being raped. They're being molested. Um, what the apostles suffered, it was graphic. They could not tell it all because people would be afraid. And, and, and so let me tell you something. For those that are leading people in, they have to go through this. Okay. For those that are leading people in. But the flock, when they come up on the truth, God will protect you. He will show you. He will. He will show you. But you got to get up on the truth. Because when you're not up on the truth, then you are just a target for anybody. Anybody can, 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 can do something to you when you're not up on the truth. And, and, and the big lie is that truth resides in a, 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 a household um, where a man is um, the omnipresent and he's the cover. Man is not the covering of the church. Um, you saying something about Hollywood. I need to um, bring that up. Okay, Hollywood. Hallelujah. 
Good morning. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you for all that is coming aboard. God bless you guys. I'm so glad that you're up here on this morning. Um, I have been fighting to come up here because it had, it had gotten so graphic. How do you know when you're on the side of the Lord? Because everybody is not going to be on the side of the Lord when it doesn't come to satisfying the lust and the desires of the flesh. Okay. Now, um, when the Lord had asked me to do this, um, you know, all of us want to to make God happy. We all want to do the will of the Lord. We all want to be, you know, submissive and obedient to our Savior. We all want to do this, but we just don't realize what we're going um, to have to sacrifice, what we're going to have to go through in order to accomplish what God tells us to do. I remember when I was ordained um, many years ago in 1994 um, in Bakersfield, California, according to Jeremiah, the first chapter, and also Leviticus, the, pre um, the chapter of the priesthood, with, you know, the right thumb, right toe, right ear, you know, and but I was ordained according to the prophetic and the priesthood. And I, I didn't understand that way back then, but I understand it now. You know, and, and one of the things that Jeremiah had to do is he had to tear down what was not true. He had to root out what was not true. This was his assignment. He could not even begin to build. He could not even begin to plant until he rooted up, until he tore down what was not of God. Okay. And he let us know, um, in the second chapter of Jeremiah, in the, in the, in the ending of Jeremiah, the first chapter, that they, that came out of the north, they built their thrones at the end entering in of Jerusalem. They built their thrones at the entering in of Jerusalem. So they set up dominion at the entering in of Jerusalem. And so we got to understand that when we read this book, if our eyes are not open and we have no spiritual insight that these words are nothing but a history book. But when we become woke, when we become awakened and truth awakens us, it makes us aware. It makes us aware. And this is why Satan comes against those that are willing to make the sacrifice, willing to fast and to shut down the body so the spirit man can break through break through the black mass break through the matter that we have been concealed in we, we have to be willing to make the sacrifice paul said these people are enemies of the cross god bless you husband i'm so glad to see you baby hallelujah i love my husband a good man and so let's go to jeremiah i'm, I'm gonna finish this real quick um so they, they, they don't have preeminence over one another because there's no substance in either. Um, um, Solomon understood that one event happened to them all. Um, what happened in the garden didn't just happen to beast, but it happened to man. And man became subjugated because of the fall in the garden, because he was separated from his beloved. He was separated from his eternal father. And now Yeshua came. He came to reconnect us. He came to reestablish us. He came to put us back in our rightful place. When I told people that God had called me to open up an academy, people laughed at me. They thought that this was funny. You understand? Me too. I thought it was funny too, because why would you ask? me to do something you know that I don't have the financial or the educational capabilities to do but I have the what the insight I have the mind of the father that was open to me the Bible say that when we seek ye first the kingdom of righteousness what is righteousness righteousness is what God said righteousness is what God done what he's already done Jesus said I don't do anything on my own will or my own um, um, fruition I do it because my father has revealed it to me so what is righteous righteousness is what God has already accomplished in the heavenly places. And so when we say thy kingdom come, thy will be done, we are saying what you have already done up there, we want you to manifest it down here. Well, we got to come into alignment. Isn't it? I love you too, baby. We have to come into alignment. Is that not right? We have to come into alignment. But for those of us that are, are moving in the way of the Lord, we have beasts coming after us and their faces are ugly. They have beaming eyes. Their spirit have taken on the gravelness, the ravenous nature of of their flesh because they were unwilling to surrender the outer man in order to move into the kingdom and so now the spirit has taken on the nature of the flesh and they have become beasts they have become beasts yes they have become beasts they look good on the outside they look glamorous on the outside they look wonderful on the outside and because we have been taught to walk by what we see and not by what we know and understand is true then we receive wolves into our bosom these are wolves and sheep clothing and God said that the clothes are coming off judgment is on the rise great people are about to fall remember I told you this remember I told you this it's not that you want it to happen but it's gonna happen because souls have been destroyed lives have been diminished 
because of the crimes that have been done against the soul of humanity. And God is raising up off of his throne. And he's about to take position in this realm. He's about to show forth his strong arm. And he's going to deliver his people out of the captivity of those that will not give them the right way to go. That will not lead them down the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. This is not about our name. This is for the name's sake of the Lord. It is for his name's sake that we take a stand. It is for his his name's sake that we suffer. It is for his name's sake that the souls of man will be brought into what? The revelation of God and find out who they are and what they were designed to do in this realm. What they were designed to do. What they were created to be in this realm. Not what another man said, but what God said about them in the day of their creation. We must rise up. Rise up. It's not going to be easy. I've lost my fear, you guys. Because I've been brutalized by beasts that are preaching truth. But they are rapists. They are homosexuals. They are dykes. They are all, they have all these spirits. They have taken it into a holy place. And God said it has come before me. And I am about to strip people and you're going to see great men fall. Great people are about to fall. The, the, the way that the government is set up, things are about to, to be shifted. It's going to blow your mind. Because they should have bowed down to serve him. They should have put this thing back into the custody of our king. But we know it had to go this way. It's already written. Listen to this. Listen to this, you guys. Jeremiah 1 and 10. Today I have appointed you to set over nation. For the Lord has put in his hand upon, he had put his hand upon my mouth. And why did he put his hand upon his mouth? That he might root up. That he might, come on, let's go there real quick. Let's go there. Don't nobody want to be Jeremiah. Don't nobody want to live in no pit. Don't nobody want to live without what they need. Don't nobody want to be um, in a position where they cannot take care of their loved ones and do it. But if you love God more than you love yourself, if you love God more than you love the things that are attached to you, then you will surrender to him. You will go ahead and, and give your life over to him so he can use you in this end time move. He needs soldiers in this army. He needs people that will love him beyond themselves, that will love him beyond them, themselves. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to pay off after a while. It is. It's going to pay off. But you're not going to want things because it's going to satisfy you because you're going to be satisfied in him. He's going to fulfill us in him. I, I, I feel so fulfilled in him that although I do not have or acquire, have the thing that I need, I am fulfilled in him. I know that I have all that I need with him. But I'm talking about physically speaking. Look, let me tell you something. This is what this is what God had told us to do. You got people building churches, right? They're building churches everywhere. You got people running the churches. They sing and they dance and they doing all these things, but nobody's being delivered. Nobody's being free. Nobody's being developed. Nobody don't know who they are. Why is this? What kind of church would do this? We are here to develop and to bring the souls of man into full age. So they can become what God told them to be, designed them to be. Just as he planted the word or the word in the belly of Mary. And it became a manifestation called Yeshua HaMashiach. He has also planted a word in each and every one of us. There is a word that he has spoken over all creation. And we must walk and manifest in that word. But if we are not being led to the mind of God. In the mind of God is the light of God. And the light of God is in man. But man has been blinded to that light because he lives out of the soul. And the soul has been reduced to his, his lower nature. And in that nature, there's nothing but beast. And people get angry with you because they don't want to surrender. They become king. They get angry with you because they didn't want to make the sacrifice or they want to try to hurt you. They get angry with you because they are not willing to do what it takes in order for them to help others to get free. Because they know that in their heart that they are wicked because they want money. Because they want, they are all about greed. They are all about fattening up their own hearts. But this is about souls. Souls, people's souls are perishing. Souls are perishing because man do not want to deny his out of nature every man will live forever the soul the spirit of man is a is a is a is a spirit that cannot die so it's either gonna perish and it, it's gonna reign and rule in hell because it has to go to a place you know I mean and it, it can't go to heaven if it's evil 
if it has never been transformed, if it's never been manifested, if it's never found out what it was, so that spirit is going to go to a, a, a burning hell because it cannot go to God because it never knew God because it was lost. And people say, well, God know all things. Well, why when the man that went up there, um, when, when, when many went up there, they had worked in the church. They had did all these works in the church. And the Bible say that they said they did this in his name and they did that in his name. Well, why would the Lord say to them, I never knew you. I don't know you. Who are you? I never knew you. So they never came into agreement with what God said about them. They never came into agreement with the word of the Lord. So they were not found written in the book because they never came became a part of the book because they never became what God said about them. The book of life is what God says about us. I'm telling you, these people that follow Christ, they suffered. It was not this glamour show that we see. They suffered. It's not an attractive thing. It is not attractive. It is a painful road that we must take in order for others to be free. Now, you got to be chosen to do this. This is not something that you can just readily do on your own. But there are many people that are called to do the 30 to 60 fold. But those that are called to do that 100 fold, they had to give up everything. They had to give up everything in order for them to bring the revelation of God's mind to the masses. They had to give it all up. Okay, so you cannot get angry with people that were willing to do what you were not willing to do, especially if they were chosen to do it. You know, and then you have these beasts, these renegade beasts. Those that say that women should shut up, women should not speak, women shouldn't do this, women shouldn't do that. Look, in the spirit, there's neither male nor female. In the spirit, there's neither one. So what God will use, he will use whatever in order to translate his eternal message into time. He will use whatever in order to translate his heavenly language into the language of this world. So people will understand that they, they must find him. They must find him before their physical time run out. Because once the body is gone, the spirit man is released. And then what is the spirit going to do? He's going to look to the left and the right and not know what happened to him. Because he's lost. That's what it means to be lost. It means that when you're lost. And ain't nobody teaching this in the church. And, and, and I don't expect people on Facebook to finance what God told me to do. That's why I don't get up here begging for money. See, because I know that what God told me to do costs over $10 million. And ain't nobody trying to ask nobody for that kind of money. You understand? God has to supply this thing. God has to, he has to, he's the one that gave it. So he had, because he knows that I have to set up classrooms. He knows that I got to get this stuff going and rolling and that people have to come in and get developed. We got to get people trained and get them out of here. We got to get them trained and get them out of here. We got to get people developed so they can find out who they are. So they can look into the mirror of God, into the face of God. God's face is a mirror. And it's in his face that we find out who we are. Not in the face of another man. Men that do this, men that do this, they are nothing but greedy dogs looking to fatten their bellies. That's all they are. They're greedy dogs. They are allowing all kind of atrocities in the houses that say that they are named after the name of the Lord. Look at what Jeremiah said. He said, I got to pull down. I got to root out before I could ever plant. This is in Jeremiah 1 and starting at the 10th verse. Look, anyone that have killed innocent souls, some people done it ignorantly because they follow protocol. They just followed pro protocol. They went after that person. But look, if it ain't working for them, it can't work for you. If it ain't working for them, how can it work for you? We are not here to set up temples so people can live like hell in a church. No, you are here to get people developed. You are here to bring people to full aid. That's what the tutors and the governors are for. How can you govern something when you ain't been governed by God? How can you develop somebody when you ain't been developed by God? God said that he gave us a personal relationship. He tore the veil of the temple into that we can all enter in and have communion with him. Okay, now I'm I'm preaching like I preach like I'm preaching in a man's church at a hotel room and been here for some time. But I don't care. You want to know why? Because this is not about gay. This is not about what I look to a bunch of people that are greedy dogs. But this is about the kingdom of righteousness reigning in the heart of man, and God will be manifested. And if He got to destroy a world to prove who He is, He will. 
Because this is all about him. This is all about him. And man is not going to be able to operate apart from him. He's going to show himself. Judgment is upon the land. Judgment is upon the houses of God. It is rising up in the earth right now. The judgment of God is here. It ain't coming, it's here. You understand? Because we must move into the place of holiness. Because his spirits, the spirits of man, the spirits of mankind, they are being lost in the house. They are not being developed. They are, they are being led away from God. They are being led out to lust and greed. God is he's putting up his strong arm. You hear me? I'm willing to suffer. Because I know. That these are spirits that cannot die. And if they are not led back to their eternal father. Guess what? <laughs> They're going to be lost. All because they didn't know. All because someone did not look sacrifice so others can live. Let's go, let's go to the next scripture. Titus 1 and 12 says. Turning from the truth. These people. Let's go there real quick. Let me do Jeremiah first. I'm, 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 I'm excited you guys. I haven't been up here in a minute. Jeremiah said, starting at the 10th verse, he said, See, I have this day set thee above the nations and over the kingdom to root out, to pour down, and to destroy, not to eradicate, but to destroy the lie, the lie, okay? And to throw down, to throw down. You're going to have to throw down because they're going to come against you. They're going to raise up against you. They threw him in pits, okay? Made, wanted him to shut his mouth, all right? But God said that he rose him up for that hour. He touched his mouth that he would speak the word of the Lord. And that he will say what God told him to say. This is not about our outer man. This is about our spiritual man being connected to our spiritual father. And obeying him with all of our hearts. With all of our mind. With all of our soul. In spite of the discomfort. In spite of the poverty. In spite of the perplexity. In spite of all of these things. We must serve him. Because souls are on the line. Souls. Spirits. Spirits of man. The spirit of man that God want to reunite with him. He want them back. We belong to him. We don't belong to a man. Our spirit came from something greater than us. It came from something greater than us, y'all. And for men not to lead us back to where we come from, what are they doing? And why are they doing it? We are here to be developed. The creature must take on the attribute of the creator. Otherwise, the creature becomes a beast. Otherwise, the creature becomes a beast. He takes on the nature of bestiality. Okay. And then he become a ravenous animal. Listen to this, you guys. And so he said that, 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 that he's after that, he's going to throw down and then he builds and he plants. You can't even build, begin to build and plant until you get rid of the lie. The lie must be dismantled. The lie must be destroyed. The lie must be uprooted. So let's go to Titus real quick. Let's go to Titus. Titus, uh, uh, just a little while longer. I'm going to be up here just a little while longer. Got somebody beating on the floor downstairs. So I'm going to be up here just a little while longer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Look, when you really love God, you're going to do what he tell you to do. You don't care where you got to do it from. You don't care how you got to do it. You're going to do what the Lord tell you to do it. You understand? You're going to do what the Lord tell you to do. And, 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 and this is why we look at the things that seem to be obviously going in the right direction. No, just because people have money, just because people have fame don't mean they're going the right way. This is the lie of Satan. The, the, the glitter, the glam, all of these things. This, this is the lie. This is the great deception. Okay. Because we have been led away by the, by the comforts of our, of our lower man. But people that acquire these things, they are not happy. Go talk to some of them. Some of them don't even love themselves. And they are millionaires. They are billionaires. And they commit suicide because they are not happy. Because when you have emptied out all that you are, and you have no substance of God on the inside of you, you are empty. You are lost. You have nothing. You have nothing to show for what you are, except for what you gave to the world. And the world is not going to do anything but trample over it. They're going to trample over it because they don't understand what value is. Their value have been reduced to material. And material is black mass. It is something that is not, it is, is, it is set in decay. Okay, I'm going to Titus, you guys. I'm going to Titus. Titus is a good book. Titus, 1 and 12. These guys had to deal with some stuff. You hear me? They had to contend with some real animals, all right? 
and and why do you think things have changed why do you think things have changed okay one in twelve one of them one one of themselves let's start at eleven one at one in eleven whose mouth must be stopped he's talking about these false teachers false teachers whose mouths must be stopped okay um who subvert whole houses teaching things which they are not for filthy lucre sake. They're doing it for the money. They're doing it all for the money. One of themselves, um, even a prophet of their own, said the Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Okay, slow bellies. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Okay, now he talking about men that are defiling, they are defiling the soul of man for filthy lucre's sake. These are false prophets, false teachers, those that have come into the house, that are speaking things that are not in alignment with the truth of God, has nothing to do with spiritual redemption, but they have become reputable. The Bible says, if you go down further, that they have become reputable. They are reputable. They think what they are doing is right when they're wrong. Mm -hmm. um, go to 1 Corinthians 15, 32. It says, if after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. Look, he said that these beasts were after the manner of men. Okay, these beasts. He fought with them at Ephesus. What advantage do I if the dead rise not? So if there is no such thing as spiritual redemption, except for when you get in the grave, then why are people dying? Why are they trying to stump me out? Why are they trying to destroy anyone that has truth? Um, if there is no such thing as the resurrection of the dead. Because we are spiritual beings. And Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, came to give us spiritual access into another location so we could have truly eternal life. So the spirit man is eternal. It is an eternal being that Christ came to redeem, that Christ came to restore, that Christ came to put back into her rightful place in eternity. But if the dead rise not, why are they doing all, why are we fighting beasts? Why are beasts coming into our sphere? Why are beasts coming in and out of our, uh, trafficking in and out of our walls? Why be, if the dead rise not? Why is the system of the world set up grid system where they can penetrate the, the brain mass and manipulate the chemistries of the brain and to manipulate by alphabet, by, by, um, by, n um, numeric, um, 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 symbols and, and signals? Why are they doing all that if the dead rise not? Why are they keeping us located to the outside and they have um, 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 inundated the world with engineers, engineers that can manipulate and, 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 and control the brain waves of humanity, can flip a switch, make a man shoot 10 people at one time only because, only because they got control of the handles and the grid system of the electronic and, 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 and mechanical world system. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they're doing it from the outside and they're doing it from the inside. But God said that their systems are about to fall. Oh yeah, this great wizard of ours is about to come down. Oh yeah. But we're gonna be renewed, you guys. Ain't nothing bad gonna happen after it's all over. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. It's going to end up the way it should be. You, you I, I don't know, many of you may not have been born in my era, but it was a good era. Where, where, where people cared about one another. But when you break down these grid systems where they did all this energy testing, where they did all these um, um, separation of proton, neutron, electrons, and all these kinds of things, shattering the soul of man by electronic means, using engineers and all these kinds of things to do so, then people cannot feel each other because their energy is being manipulated by outside and external means. But then you got to go inside the church house and deal with the beast of the field that have reduced the word of God down to lasciviousness and use grace as a method to live any kind of way they want to live. This is an abomination. And just as it is in the world, so shall it, so shall it be in the church. Because the world want to control man. You cannot make a man a computer and expect him not to be a loving person. He cannot connect to another human being if he ain't connected to himself. If you make a person a computer 
And all they become is a data machine. Machine for data information. That's all they are. Data information. They have no God consciousness because you pulled them so far out away from the borders of the spirit. The mind, the soul is now so turned away from the consciousness of God that only thing that is conscious of is the outside world. Now you, you, you want to whine and cry after you have expanded your telescopes called television. The word tele mean to, 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 to bring the vision of man to an end. That's what tele mean. It means to turn the vision to an end, to turn to an end. Okay, so they're expanding the vision to an end. Okay, so now you, you, you expect man to have a conscience when you have taken away the consciousness of God in him because you pulled him so far out away from himself that he don't even connect to God so he can't connect to me. Man cannot connect to one another if they're not connected to what created them. We must connect to the creator and the creator connects us to one another. It is God's love that connects. This is why it was so good when I was growing up. Because even though they didn't go to church, they had a God consciousness. They had a God consciousness. They had a God consciousness. But if you take away the consciousness of God and left with nothing but brain mass and soul and intellect, you got a bunch of computers walking around here without God consciousness. And they do not realize that they are not connected to God Almighty. But yet they are. What the, you can create clones in this place. Because a clone ain't nothing but, it ain't nothing but emotion. It ain't nothing but brain mass. It ain't nothing but, but, but intellectual animal. That's all it is. But the spirit of man comes from God. And if God is not being acknowledged inside of his own creation any longer, how can you expect man to acknowledge you? Oh no, he'll shoot you. He'll shoot your mother because he has no connection to himself and he has no connection to God and he has no connection to us and we have no connection to one another. So now we are all broken off from the whole, which is our creator. And we are shocked at what's going on in our world. Come on now. We are the purpose and the reason for what's going on in our world. And you think that they're not going to come after people that have truth? They are nuclearizing people. They are using nuclear weapons, doing slow burning. That's why your hair falling out. Radiation take out your hair. Radiation take the hair. Radiation causes the teeth to decay. Because when you connect to the spirit, the Bible says the branch disconnected from the vine will decay. And man will pick up the branch and put it into a fire and men will be burned together. And this is what happened. Men are not connected to the vine. They're not connected to the spirit of God in them. And God is, is, is and, and, and Christ came to connect us back to the husbandman, which is God. But if we are not connected to the husbandman, which is God, and we are not connected to the vine, which is Yeshua Hamashiach, which is Christ, but we are only connected to the body, which is the branch, disconnected from life, then it has no healing substance in it. It has nothing to heal itself. And, then, and, and, and now you have penetrating forces, manipulating chemicals in the brain to see if this works. And then giving medication to outward symptoms that are being caused by internal tragedy. The soul of man has been atrociously violated by every entity that can get that your machines are coming down. The beast of the field, you're coming down. These are crimes against nature. They're crimes against the, the, the creation of God. God created this stuff. And, and you're committing crimes against his creation. You're committing crimes against the souls of man. You're committing crimes. And judgment is on the rise. Judgment is on the rise. I got one more, two more scriptures and I'm done. Philippians said that, that, that 319, that their end is destruction. Who's God? Who's God? Whose God have become their belly. That's all they want to do is fulfill their belly. I mean, you can eat, but you ain't going to be fulfilled. Um, food will satisfy you, but it ain't, it'll never fulfill you. Okay? Food, look, material things will satisfy you, but it will never fulfill you. There's a difference with being satisfied and being fulfilled. See, material things satisfy us, but they do not fulfill us. And that's why we always long for more, because we can never be fulfilled from the outside. It only comes from within. 
So you think that someone can have truth and not be attacked. You think that someone can have truth and not be plowed upon. You think that someone can have truth and not be raped, not be brutalized because the beast of the field, because the way of the world, because Satan in his cohort don't want truth to be manifested in the soul of man because the light of God is in man and man must turn away. He must turn away from the way of the world and he must repent. Repent me to turn, to turn inward. There is a light in you. There is a God in you that's waiting to be redeemed, that's waiting to be restored, that's waiting to be reconciled to his rightful place in his creation. We belong to him, not to a man, not to an organization, not to a tradition, not to a system of the world. We're going to break this grid. God's going to dismantle this grid. Everything that's being done in our world is an atrocity to the soul of man and to the creation of our God. Oh, yes, it is. Jews said that they were brute beasts. Brute beast, brute beast, going after the ways of Korah, fighting the truth and living. Because, look, there's no law against those that are born spiritually. The Bible says when you have been born spiritually against us, there is no law. I mean, how can you, you know, bring law against God? God is being born inside of his creation. Now, what Satan has done, he has tried to restrict God from being born in you. He has tried to restrict God from being born in me. And so he's used every method, every means, technology. This is how weak he is. He used technology. He used ignorance, the ignorance of men, especially. And I'm, I'm not racist against my own kind, but black men are the worst because they have intellect without spirit. An intellect without spirit is an intellectual beast. And now you, because you were taken away from your rightful place over the household, have brought the woman up under subjugation, have brought the woman up under subjugation to ignorance because you don't realize that that's a counterpart and a counterpart work with you, not apart from you. You understand? That is ignorance and it is the plot employee of slavery. But we must wake up. It is a light. There is a light. There's a light that's waiting to shine in the mind of those that want to receive him. We must wake up. Wake Wake up! The Bible say, oh Israel, wake up. Because God is calling his people. He's calling them home to himself. And this is my last scripture, Mark 1 and 13. And he was in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted of Satan. And there is not one of us that is not going to go through this wilderness process in order to get to the light of God. In order for us to be tested by God, in order for us to be recognized, whether we be of him or of our own fruition, uh, whether we're doing this thing to be recognized by others or whether we want to be with our eternal father for real. We are in the wilderness for this purpose, to be tested by beasts, to be tested by those that they preach truth, but they have no truth within themselves. They have great cathedrals, but they are still sold out to the way of the world. They have sold out and they have become beasts. I saw them. They are ugly, monstrous beasts. The spirit subjugated to the nature of the flesh. They're ugly. And they want to, I'm telling you, if you love God, if you want to know him, get in your Bible. Because time is what you're racing against. You're racing against time. You got eternity living inside of you. Eternity is living inside of all of us. And it is called the Spirit of God because the Spirit cannot die. But if we don't connect to that eternal part of us, then the soul that sins shall surely die. That's the wages of sin. He didn't change the payment plan. He just gave us another way out. The payment plan is still the same. The, the, he, the payment plan is still the same, y'all. I miss you guys, and I love you with an everlasting love. I pray that I provoked, inspired one, at least one of you, to seek him with your whole heart, to seek him with your whole soul. Because I'm telling you that the days are coming, that no man is going to be able to find him. Because the world is being darkened. Look, because they're drawing you out of the soul. They're drawing you out of yourself. And if you don't live in the house, then you have no more light. Because God is in the house. He's in the house. The kingdom of God come not with observation. Lo, we can't say here it is or there it is. But the kingdom of God is on the inside of each and every one of us. So God is in the house. 
and Jesus came or Yeshua HaMashiach came to lead us back into the house. I love you guys with an everlasting love. I just want you to know those that have committed such crimes and atrocities against the soul of man. Judgment is on the rise. There's going to be such a shaking in the land and in the churches that man is going to fear because God is coming back into his creation. And they will say yes. Come on. His love is the best love you can ever have. I promise you with all being lost, with all being brutalized, all these things, I'm telling you, his love is still better than that. His love make you just want to keep on going. Even though it seems horrific from the outside, when you get inside the house and find the love of your soul, the lover of your soul, the lover, the one that really loved your soul, not these wolves, but the father who loved your soul and calling you back home. You ain't going to have no regrets. I promise you, you won't have no regrets. And the material things will just be something to accommodate you. They won't be fulfilling you. They'll just accommodate you in a place where we really don't belong because we are pilgrims and strangers in this land. You know, and we are going home after a while. Bye-bye, you guys. Have a blessed one. Mm. Charges are coming. Talk to you later.